Hi everyone, thank you for joining in to hear about my postpartum story. And as you can see, the most recent videos, I have less and less makeup with a newborn. It's hectic. It's really tedious spending half an hour to go do my makeup just for a video. So let's be real and show how life really is. And just as I said that, Lily woke up. So I'm going to be carrying her throughout this video, I guess, and see if I can make it through without her crying. Obviously with postpartum, everyone's bodies are different. They're going to heal at different rates. Everyone's going to have a different experience. So stay tuned in for mine. So I think I mentioned in my birth story that I didn't get a chance to weigh myself right before I went in, but two days prior before going in, I was 185.3 pounds, and I wasn't able to get to a scale until about 10 days postpartum, and that's when I weighed about 168.6. Keep in mind that at the beginning of my pregnancy, I was 154.6, and so I gained a little over 30 pounds this entire pregnancy, and I lost half of that giving birth, and half of that was how much Lily weighed when she was first born. She was 8 pounds 5.5 ounces. So after delivery, honestly I was really surprised at how I was able to run without any sleep. I kept telling everyone that I fare better with sleep deprivation, which might be true, I don't know. I think I was just so in awe with what just came out of me and I just kept wanting to watch her. I guess another part of it was also anxiety because sometimes babies sleep so still you just want to make sure there's nothing wrong with them. The only times that I would feel tired it was probably during breastfeeding and that was probably more due to hormones than being tired. Sorry if I'm swinging back and forth, I just want to make sure she stays asleep. So I know that people assume that moms should have a better connection with the baby than dads because the baby grew up inside of her. But to be honest, I felt pretty disconnected with Lily for the first couple of weeks. And that's because even the day that she was born, she would smile at Mike, she would smile at all the grandparents, but she didn't smile at me until maybe three weeks after she was born. She always looked at me with this confused face. And I thought in the beginning, maybe it was because I kept switching from wearing glasses or wearing contacts and so maybe I look different to her. Babies at a young age, but they can only see 8 to 12 inches from their face. So I don't really think that's the case because I'm probably just a blur. But I feel like babies should be able to recognize through voice and through smell. I felt like maybe she wasn't connecting with me. And the other thing was that while she was in utero, naturally I'm not a really talkative person. Throughout the day, she probably doesn't even hear mom's voice very much because when I'm at work, I don't make presentations or like really talk to people much. I just do my work and go home. So the only time that I actually use my voice is when I'm singing in the car. So maybe she might know my singing voice better than my talking voice. Anyway, on to the gory details. So I did end up having to get stitches. I had second degree tears, but the doctor didn't say specifically how many stitches that I got. The doctor only mentioned being surprised that pushing out an over eight pound baby that I didn't tear very much. I did also develop a new external hemorrhoid to go along with the other one that I had during pregnancy, and that took about three weeks for both of them to go away completely. So bleeding. I thought I was pretty lucky because pretty much after delivery, it was like a very light period. I only stayed one night in the hospital, and by the time that I left, it was pretty much just spotting, and that was it. It wouldn't even be enough to fill up a pad, just maybe wearing a panty lining. So it wasn't until six days postpartum when I went to the bathroom, I noticed two small clots in the toilet and really bright red blood. And so I put on a pad within five minutes it leaked through with my pad and my shorts and so I told Mike to get ready to take me to the ER. I tried to change into the bigger pads that the hospital provided and the mesh underwear and when I switched it out I noticed a clot pretty much the size of a cigar and I was bleeding uncontrollably. I found some black shorts and I brought a towel with us to sit inside the car. So when we got to the ER Mike went in to get me a wheelchair and then when I was trying to move from the car onto the wheelchair I felt a huge gush and I was pretty much dripping onto the sidewalk. So I've never been to an ER before but I didn't realize how slowly it would run in there. I was thinking emergency room, emergency, don't you want to deal with people faster than that? I checked in around 4.30 and I wasn't brought into a room until about 7.30. So I was bleeding through the chucks pad that I was sitting on. So I asked the nurse if I should switch it out for a new one. They wheeled me to another room to switch the pad and when I got up, another gush of blood. It pretty much leaked all over the floor and Mike said it was really disgusting. And when I got wheeled back to the waiting room, back to my spot, we noticed that the blood was actually on the waiting floor as well. Well, it was really funny because there's an old man that said, oh, be careful, there's some blood on the floor. And then Mike and I laughed, yeah, that's my blood. And some of you may be thinking, you were bleeding out for three hours and they didn't bring you in? Well, my vitals were fine, I wasn't feeling dizzy. So you can kind of imagine like my uterus being a balloon and all the blood is sitting inside there and that's just the blood that it's trying to get rid of. I was fine, my uterus was just deflating all my blood out. So when I got to the room, they laid some chest pads onto the bed and they let me lay down there for a while just to see how much would be bleeding out. 
the ER doctor did a pelvic exam because he wanted to see where the blood was coming from. And obviously it was coming from my uterus, but he was trying to see if it was the placenta that didn't get removed or something else. He did say that some stitches fell apart, but then that those scabs were dry, so that wasn't the case. But since there wasn't any placenta left inside, it wasn't dangerous. And so it was just normal bleeding. But since I was bleeding so much, he did bring an OB to come in to consult with. So the OB came in to do an ultrasound, was showing my uterus with a lot of blood inside. She did a pelvic exam as well, and she manually pulled out some of the clots. And I think she pulled out another three or four cigar-sized clots. And Mike was watching from that end, and he said that I pretty much ruined pig's blood for him. So the OB told me that my uterus pretty much forgot how to contract, and that's why I wasn't bleeding after delivery. And it was just holding blood inside. She prescribed me the medication that they give you right after delivery, just to make your uterus contract and to bleed out as much blood as possible while you're there at the hospital. She wanted me to take the medicine and see what happens within an hour, and then to continue taking that medicine within a 24-hour period. So that medicine had actually given me a fever right after delivery, and they gave me another fever when I took it again. But they gave me Tylenol, and my fever went back down to normal. In total, I was at the ER for about seven hours when I was about to be discharged, and I caught up. A huge clot fell out, and I mean huge. It was about the size and shape of probably a teenager's heart. And I took a picture of it, but I don't know if I want to post it because it'll just gross people out. Maybe I'll link it down below in case any of you are really, really curious and want to see it. It's interesting because all your discharge paperwork tells you to go to the ER if you have a clot the size of a golf ball. This clot was the size of probably five or six golf balls. So he called the ER doctor back into the room to look at the clot, and he kind of looked impressed. <laughs> he was joking that I gave birth again, but pretty much they said that I could still be discharged because I wasn't uncontrollably bleeding anymore after that large clot. So I got dressed and got some medicine, and then I went home. Sorry, I actually had to cut my video short because I got interrupted by my mom coming home and the dog barking, and now it's three weeks later that I'm trying to continue this video. <laughs> so after that ER visit, I pretty much had no bleeding. I had a follow-up with a random OB who just quickly looked down there and she said I was healing fine. She didn't do an ultrasound or anything to see if there was remaining blood. So after about two and a half weeks postpartum, I was pretty much healed completely and with no bleeding. It wasn't until about week five that I started feeling soreness down there, but I decided to wait until my six week checkup because it wasn't a big deal and my OB said I was healing fine. Everything looked normal and I could begin to exercise and have sex. Speaking of sex, we didn't wait to try until about seven and a half weeks and honestly I think it would not have hurt if I haven't read so many stories about it hurting. I was anticipating that it would hurt and so I couldn't relax at all and I think that's what made it hurt more than it should have. I feel like if I was completely relaxed it would have been fine. There were a few days that I cried randomly from baby blues. I also thought I might have had a mild case of PPA, postpartum anxiety, and PPD, postpartum depression. And this was due to the thoughts that I was having, the stressors, not just from having a newborn, but just from my living situation, like overbearing family members. I normally get rashes and hives from anxiety, and in the past three weeks, it was spreading all over my legs. It started off with a small patch on my right knee, and then it grew down the side and the back of my right leg. It was a small patch on my left leg, and now I have bigger patches on my right and left thighs now. The steroid cream I had that was previously prescribed for my rashes wasn't really helping. I saw a dermatologist again and they prescribed an ointment to help heal it faster. To end this vlog, I will include some quick clips of my postpartum belly shots. The first one was one week postpartum. Moving on to three weeks postpartum when I weighed 161 pounds. I was thinking my belly looked the same, but it's slightly smaller. Overall, I think I had a really good and easy pregnancy and labor and delivery experience. I wouldn't really mind having more kids in the future. But you know what they say, if you had it easy the first time, it probably is not going to be that easy the second time. Prior to labor and delivery, I had heard so many horror stories, and so I was really scared of the contractions, the epidural, possibly having to get Pitocin, and having other complications. And I kept thinking maybe it would be easier if I just would somehow get a scheduled C-section instead of having to go through all that pain before maybe possibly having to go through a C-section anyway. But for the most part, things kind of went smoothly and wasn't as painful as I imagined. I've also read some really poor reviews on labor and delivery nurses, not specifically for the hospital that I went to, but just in general. And so I was really afraid of nurses that were like really mean and forcing me to do things and not letting me get some rest and or maybe being condescending. I don't know. But my nurses were really, really kind. They were really helpful, which made everything the experience all the more better. Thank you for sticking through to the end of this very long video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also hit the bell to get notifications or click over here to subscribe to my channel. That way you know when I post a new video. And you can watch my birth story video over here. Bye.